Yes, people. Good morning. It's Tuesday. It's Sam. This is United People's TV. You know where you're at for your daily Manchester United transfer news conversation. We've still got a little bit of time left in this window and every single morning, 10.30 now, UK time instead of 9.30, it gives me a little bit more time to prepare, wait for the stories to come out. And there's lots to run through this morning. As there always is in the transfer window at Manchester United, even after we've signed Rafael Varane and Jaden Sancho, because we all know that we should not be done in this transfer window yet. We all know that we should be signing a central midfielder. And this video is me explaining exactly. I mean, we all knew it anyway, but Jesse Lingard is central to all of that. And there has been, I would say, positive developments in the last 24, 48 hours about Jesse Lingard's exit from Manchester United that bodes well for Man United signing a new midfielder. How are you all doing this morning? I can see Josh Williams in the comments. I can see Thomas, a couple of the members from the gang. How are you doing? Good morning to all of you. Anybody watching on Facebook, anybody watching on YouTube, you let me know where you're watching from. I'll try and give you shout outs throughout the entire stream. Remember, leave the town you're watching from and the country. But let's talk about Jesse Lingard. By the way, how, how sexy is this? The guys over at oldschoolfootball.co.uk have sent me a couple more things. Honestly, I'm not sponsored by them. I just said, look, can you just send me a couple of things? Because I like it. I don't want to buy the kits. I don't want to support the Glazers. I want to wear Man United stuff. This beauty, this number. I think this is from when we won the uh, European Cup in 68. I think. Anyway, looks good, doesn't it? I like it. Let's talk about Jesse. Let's talk about Jesse Lingard. In fact, let me go down to the comments here. See where you're watching from. Um, Matt, big fan of the old school shirt. Good morning to you. Oh, look at that. Prince watching from Morocco. We've got an... And love and Lavoco watching from South Africa. Hope I, I said your name right there, my friend. Uh, Adam, you're a big fan of shirt, and it likes didn't they? Look, I love retro, and these guys, I like what they're doing. Oh, wow, good morning. Been a while for away. New morning's wrecking you. Good luck to you, new father. Represent, but let's speak about Jesse Lingard, ladies and gents. I know we all want to speak about Ruben Neves. I know we all want to speak about Eduardo Camavinga and signing one of them. But the crucial aspect is that Manchester United now need to sell a player before we sign a player. Simple as that. And that is where it comes in. That is where Jesse Lingard comes in. And this is why it's been an exciting development. Let me run through this story for you and explain to you exactly why we should be getting excited. West Ham offered lifeline in Jesse Lingard pursuit. Obviously, if you're on the, the peoplesperson.com, you would have read this story this morning. And obviously, all of you did. If you don't, head over to the peoplesperson.com, all the latest Manchester United transfer news, and it's going to be on there probably before I talk about it. Now, yesterday, it came from the Times, from, uh, I think, it, what's, what, what was the name of the reporter? Uh, Paul Hurst, that's it. Paul Hurst. And, and Paul Hurst is very much in the top tiers of UK journalists when it comes to the UK press, James Ducker, David Ornstein and Paul Hurst are probably three of my go-to. Simon Stone from the BBC as well. This is what Paul Hurst had to say about Jesse Lingard. So West Ham looks set to make another attempt to sign Lingard. The Hammers assistant manager, Stuart Pearce, has been quoted as saying this. The ball is in Manchester United's court. He is contracted to them. We would like him with us. There is no doubt about that. He is a special lad and was very good around the players who like him. Now, you let me know what you think about Lingard and West Ham. It's a developing situation, but Stuart Pearce there going on record saying, look, we want him. He's trying to say that the ball is in Manchester United's court. I'll be honest, I would, I would quite disagree with that. The ball is very much in West Ham's court. They know what the price is. They know what the fee is. We head back to the story here. We can see what the price is being quoted as. 25 million. Which I think, look, Jesse Lingard might only have um, 12 months left on his contract. But Jesse Lingard is a Premier League proven Manchester United player who nearly forced his way into the England team, who is on the edge of the England team. And he's easily worth 25, 30 million pounds. Sure, the fact that this contract is running out certainly reduces the value. And that's going to be the sticking point. It's all about contracts this summer, isn't it? It all seems to be complicated around Paul Popper because of the contract. It all seems to be complicated around Jesse Lingard because of the contract. I suppose contracts had to run out at some point. But West Ham really want him. West Ham are pushing for Jesse Lingard. Right now, it's the 17th of August. We've got 14 days, two weeks exactly, until that transfer window closes. Now, there is still time. And I maintained, I, I went on record, was it last week? And I said, look, I think Manchester United will be signing 
a third player this summer. I've maintained that. I've stood by that and I still stand by it. But Jesse Lingard is at the centre of it all. Now, we could keep Jesse Lingard. And I've said this, look, we, we, we're kind of repeating things here. I've gone on record saying, look, we could keep Jesse Lingard and he, he might play a role next year. But no, the 25 million, even though, look, if, if you go down the article here on the people's person, you'll see here that there's a story from the Express saying that Manchester United might have dropped that to 20 million. Now, I think anywhere between 20 and 30 million, I think is fair for Jesse Lingard. You let me know what you, what value you think it should be in the comments below. But for me, anything over 20, I feel, is a fair price. Anything less than 20 and Manchester United are getting a pants pulled down. We should be getting at least 20 million for Jesse Lingard. Now, that might not be enough directly for someone like Neves, someone like Camavinga. But when it comes to Manchester United signings this summer, it's not as clear cut as just uh, as Jaden Sancho was 72 million. He wasn't 72 million this summer. We split that over four years. Therefore, this summer, our cash outlay on Jesse on, on Jaden Sancho was about 16 million. I believe we did something similar with Rafael Varane. I'll be surprised if Real Madrid let us split that over four years, considering how cheap the fee was. But the same thing would happen if we signed a midfielder. So if we got 20 million, and I'm sure in the same way as we're stretching out where the cash comes in, West Ham wouldn't give us 20, 25 million up front for Jesse Lingard. But United can, already United can, can afford a new midfielder. But Jesse Lingard and this fact that West Ham are coming back in for him now towards the end of the window, this is the movement we wanted, ladies and gentlemen. West Ham was the obvious choice for where Lingard was going to leave Manchester United this summer. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has maintained that all the time that, ah, uh, you know, Jesse Lingard is, is in our plans. He's not going anywhere. It's just Solskjaer posturing. He said the same thing before Lukaku got sold. He said the same thing because, before Sanchez got shifted on. And it's what managers do to protect their players in the media. If he comes out and says, look, we don't want Lingard here, it reduces our negotiation tactic. It reduces our power. Therefore, it's not a smart thing to do. Solskjaer's playing it smart. And at least... West Ham are now back in for him. Because if it wasn't West Ham, you're looking abroad, really. You're looking at someone in La Liga. Maybe Lingard could go to the Bundesliga. Lingard would be a good player elsewhere. He'd probably be a good player at Manchester United next year. But we don't need good players anymore. We need great players. And that's where the levels of Jaden Sancho come into it. But let me know in the comments what you think. I'll head down there and read a few of them out. Da -da. Anorak, how you doing, my friend? Over on YouTube, make sure you drop a like and subscribe if you're new. Lingard has a good thing going on at West Ham. Respect his will to fight for a place at United. Having said that, West Ham offers regular game time and Pogba Bruno look irreplaceable. I mean, I don't disagree with anything you say there. And Lingard doesn't really affect Pogba and Bruno. Lingard would probably play on the wings and that's kind of where his position would be. But Lingard is, 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 a, is a player who strikes me as, you know, he knows his own self-worth. Clearly he does because he, he pushed for that move to West Ham last summer, last season, sorry. And that was what transformed his season. Straight away, he took to it like a duck to water. He's a very good player, very good Premier League player. And last year, he refound that form that he probably had, I think it was 2018, 17, 18, under Mourinho, when he went through some purple patch that was ridiculous. But Messi Lingard, look, man, time is up at Manchester United. And it's just so crucial for Manchester United. If we're looking at the VAT, what's, what's more important for Manchester United next year? Is it potentially having Jesse Lingard in the squad just in case we get an injury? Or is it moving Jesse Lingard on and reinvesting that money elsewhere? I mean, it's an obvious answer. It's a rhetorical question. But Manchester United will not make another signing unless we get rid of players. Jesse Lingard is top of that priority list. And Jesse Lingard, for me, is the most central figure to that because of the price around him as well. You've obviously got Andreas Pereira getting linked with moves away. He's now getting linked again by uh, by um, Paul Hurst saying Flamengo want Andreas Pereira on loan. We spoke about that yesterday. Man United hoping for a permanent deal, but could end up accepting a loan. That would be very much a loan with an obligation to buy is what the club would aim for. Get a fee to cover his wages and then put Flamengo down as an obligation to buy after that season. That's an ideal loan spell. Simple as that. Pereira's also been linked with a move to Everton, but he's thought to be low down on their list. And they've already signed a couple of wingers. Who they got? Andros Townsend. They got another one as well, can't remember. But Andres Pereira, I mean, he's, he's more of a central midfielder, I suppose. But 
Lingard is Lingard is look as I said there. Lingard holds the key to Manchester United. Lingard is where all of our focus should be on right now, as fans anyway, because we want to see the the, the Neves link is getting stronger. We want to see the Camavinga link is getting stronger, but we won't. We won't really see too much movement with any of that until someone like Jesse Lingard leaves the club. And the fact that West Ham are really back in for him now is really, really exciting. Comment here from Matthew. How you doing? Look, ladies and gents, I'll say it now quickly. If you want to become a member, like Matthew, you get priority comment. I, I spot your comments. And as members, you get priority comments read out. Simple as that. It's part of the membership. There's a little join button down below. It's less than the price of a pint. I'd love to have you on board. There's so many of you involved already, and it's great because it's really helping the channel grow. New video dropping today, by the way. Should be later on. My opinion on the Graham Sooners and Paul Pogba situation, and I'm just pissed off about it, and I have to call Graham Sooners out on the bullshit that he keeps spouting and keeps getting away with. He can't keep getting away with it. Charlie, you're thinking that Lingard will go for 15 million. I think that's a little bit underpriced, if I'm being honest. I think Lingard's worth more than that. Certainly in the grand scheme of uh, English players, Premier League players, established players, Jesse Lingard has got a lot to his game. Mr. Impact saying, what's my thoughts on the Mika Richards, Sunes Pogba thing? Make sure you watch that video later, my friend. I'll be honest, as I said, I'm pissed off. Um, it's, it's, it's ridiculous what Sunes can get away with saying, get away with doing, but I'm not going to ruin that video because you've got to keep it for later, eh? But Jesse Lingard, look, uh, Maximus, I've got, to say, I've got to respond to that one. He's allowed an opinion. There's a difference between an opinion and an agenda, my friend. A very big difference. And that is what you have to call him out on. I'm really happy to see West Ham coming back in for Jesse Lingard. It's exactly what we need as a football club. Because let's be honest, look, it's amazing that this has happened, really, that Manchester United have signed Rafael Varane have signed Jadon Sancho before we've sold players. Remember, in the years gone by, in the last four, four years or so, we'd always focus on sale, 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 getting the players out of the club before bringing in what we need. That's a switch that we've done this year. It's a big club mentality. And that in itself, I'm happy and thankful for. In an ideal situation, we'd be able to sell a couple of players now and bring in that third signing. But at least the majority of the main work that we've needed this summer has happened. Rafael Varane and Sancho are going to make such a difference. But that holding midfielder is what is going to take us from probably finishing second this year to us, us potentially winning the league. That's how much, that's how crucial that signing is. And that is why Jesse Lingard going to West Ham is so important as well. A couple of new members joining in. Big up to both of you. We've got Sheku. We've got Sheku uh, Kargbo. How are you doing? Thank you for joining. Let me know where you're watching from, Sheku. And Anarag Bubda. Good morning to you, Anurag. How you doing? Let me know where both of you are watching from. I'll try and give you some shout outs throughout the entire stream. Like, uh, da, da, da. like Jack, how you doing, Jack? Nice to see you this morning. I'm really surprised that we have not uploaded uploaded, or sold any players yet. Lingard, Delot, Andreas, sell to buy. Look, as I said, I'm very happy that Manchester United have bought without selling. Because so often, I mean, last year, what was it? Cavani on deadline day. Uh, deals were just done late in the window. We chased Jaden Sancho all summer. We were left empty-handed. It was a summer of frustration for Manchester United. It was a summer which I thought preluded um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer being sacked. I'm glad I was wrong about that. But it's kind of the way it looked it was happening. But this summer, we've gone out and we bought the two main players before we've sold players. That in itself is a very, very good thing. But what we need now is the ambition from the club. We need that ambition. Come on. you got Rafael Varane. By the way, his first interview, which I'll show you in a second, and we'll have a discussion about. Ooh, I am excited to see that man in a Manchester United shirt on the pitch. It's going to be great. It really is. Just like Christopher's excited. Thank you very much, Chris, for joining as a member this morning. Hey, nice little stream we've got going this morning. Oh, look at that. Sheku's watching from Abbotsford out in Canada. Big up to Canada. Honestly, that is a country I would love to visit my friend. I had a trip there booked. I was flying into Vancouver to then do the typical trip, get an RV, go around the Banff region for three weeks. But then uh, COVID happened. And because COVID happened, I couldn't do that trip. But don't worry, at some point in my life, I'm coming out to Canada. Let's see what's going on down here. Chris, how you doing, my friend? Nice to see you in the chat again this morning. You're saying we do need to sell Lingard and maybe someone else to buy our central midfielder, but time is running out. 
United have been better this year in the window, so we will see what happens. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Exactly that. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Time is running out. But as I've said, Manchester United really focused on Jadon Sancho, getting that deal over the line finally. Cool, we got that deal done. And now because that deal's done, it allowed us to take a step back and then we focused on selling players. Unfortunately for Manchester United, the reason that we're struggling so much this summer is because we've put players on big contracts. Over the last, Let's look at Barcelona. I mean, that's a, a far greater and worse example. Right now, their wage bill is 103% of their revenue. And it's a 70% maximum in La Liga. That's why Lionel Messi couldn't even sign for free. Because it, their wage bill was still way too much. PK's having pay cuts. Busquets. It's such a ridiculously run club. But Manchester United, on a smaller scale, have been terrible. That extension that we gave to Phil Jones. Andreas Pereira's contract that he got. Marcus Rojo's contract. Remember when that went through? Jesus Christ. Jesse Lingard's probably on a fair bit as well. Jesse Lingard's wages would probably make him one of the highest earners at West Ham. That's why they can't afford his wages. It's, it, it's, it's the big money that we've given players over the last four or five years are now... Um, it's, it's coming back to haunt us. Unfortunately, it's coming back to haunt us. And for that reason, Manchester United are struggling to sign players this year. Or sign players, sell players this year. I'm going to leave something in the comments because I keep seeing so many of you asking about this bad boy shirt. It's from oldschoolfootball.co.uk. As I said before, they're not sponsoring me. They're just sending me a few shirts and I like helping this retro look. I've just dropped a link in the comments to their website and also a discount code to get 10% off. But look, if you do get anything, fire it over to me and I can let them know because I, I like to help them. So if you do get anything, let me know about it. But look, Jesse Lingard, let, actually, let me, let me go down to the comments here. I'll read a few of your comments out here before I move on. As I always said, I try to make this the most interactive show. People try and say they've got their interactive shows, but they don't actually interact. I try and make it a bit different on here for you. Uh, Takeoff, how are you doing? You're saying, uh, I think him and the Gez, oh, sorry, I don't understand. I didn't see the start of that comment. Have you seen the Goretzka news? It seems Bayern would not play, would not fall for the players' wage demands. Uh, I said it all along. Uh, Goretzka, just ignore it. This uh, this summer, Goretzka is just angling for a new bumper contract at Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich is not a club that lets any player leave unless they want him to leave. By Bastian Schweinsteiger left when they wanted him to leave. They rarely lose players. A bit like Rafa, a bit like Real Madrid until this summer. They rarely lose players who are in their prime. They lost Rafael Varane, no. Right. Speaking of Rafael Varane, hey, look, let, let's 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 run through this together quickly. How amazing was this? Did, did, you, did you all see the interview with Rafael Varane yesterday? Let me see if I can pop it up on here. Hopefully, I won't get slapped down for copyright. I might do. We'll see. Anyway, Rafael Varane is on onefootball.co.uk. Now, the most impressive thing I've easily the most impressive thing about this interview the fact that he did it in English. I'm very excited to start uh, this new journey for me. I'm excited. It was a, a, a very very good adventure with uh, Nah, it'll be a better adventure at United. But now, Look it's in. a new start for me. Beautiful bastard that he is. To, to be here. No, it's, uh, it's difficult for me to do this interview in, in It's English so important that he did this in English. I think it's very important um, to be uh, close uh, to the fans because uh, we have the Such same a... objective. We have to fight together. Hell yeah, fight together. And, uh, it's important for me to be... Look at him. Rafael Varane. And, <laughs> and um, no, it's important for me... For my hey, look. I won't watch the whole interview because I don't know. I don't want to get slapped for copyright. But Rafael Varane, man. What an absolutely... First of all, beautiful bloke. There's nothing wrong with this. No homo. Look at that. Look at him. Look at him. Come on. Anyway. The fact that he did that in English, I think, really is, a, is kind of a... is an indicator of the player that we're getting the whole, the whole way through when we've, we've seen the stories about Rafael Varane from Real Madrid, you saw his exit from Real Madrid, right? We all watched it. He was, he was given like a, like a hero's exit. He was there for 10 years. Everybody hugged him. Everybody wanted to say goodbye to him. Everybody wanted to make sure that they gave him a good send off. And all the stories that came out throughout the entire situation of Varane was he is an extreme professional. He is the guy and everybody 
was just no nobody had a bad word to say about Rafael Varane. Let me know. Let me know if if you disagree with me. But if there is there anybody who who thinks that Varane's a bad person? I don't think so. Look at that. I saw a nice comment there from Bakang, and it caught my eye. Subscribed. Big up to you. Anybody else who's new and watching, welcome to United People's TV. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. It's free. Get involved. Gary, you're saying what a stud both our signings and grow up fans want to be here. Uh, grown up fans and uh, kind of understand it, kind of don't understand it. But look, him doing that interview in English, he could have easily done it in French. Look, there's players like Anderson who never learned English, but that was hilarious. Uh, Alexis Sanchez, did he speak English? I think he did it like quite, I mean, he might have done it a little bit, but Rafael Varane, just, I don't know, man. And like, this, this, this is why I, I say that he's a more important signing than Sancho. And I don't really think it's actually close. And I don't mean to say that as a slight against Sancho, who is an incredible player, man. Incredible. He's going to make such a difference to us. But there was such there was such a huge thing missing from the, cent, the heart of our club that someone like Varane comes in and, and fills a huge gap of that hole. Gap of that hole? A huge part of it the leadership, the role model, the actual winning mentality. He, he'll he be able to inspire and, and, and get people who are playing here. He's going to bring them up there. Very much a Bruno Fernandes type signing. Somebody who's not only a fantastic player himself, but somebody who has the ability to drag others up around him. And that's what leaders do. That's what, that's what Jaden Sancho, I don't really feel at this particular moment in time in his career, is capable of doing. And that's not a slight against him. It's that there are different points of their careers. Jaden Sancho is 21 and just coming from a couple of years in the Bundesliga. Rafael Varane is coming from a decade at Real Madrid where he won four Champions League, where he won the World Cup, where he won three La Liga titles. Therefore, they're both exciting in two very different ways. It's just that Varane, for me, feels more of a gap that's, that's so important, that's, that's been missing at Manchester United for so long. And him playing alongside Harry Maguire, it's going to be fantastic. I look at this. Let me see if I can pull this up quickly. There was a picture that came out from training yesterday of uh, Carrick and Maguire looking at Varane. And it absolutely cracked me up. Look at the way they're looking at him. Let me pull this up here. Is that it? Is that on? Oh, yeah, it's on. Look at this photo, man. <laughs> it's Rafael Varane just balling, just playing. But look. Look at that. He's like, oh, my God. I don't know why I just did accent. Oh, my God, it's Raf it's Rafael Varane. Oh, my God, it's Rafael Varane. Look at him. Maguire must be in heaven. You know, no offence to, genuinely, really, no offence to, to Victor Lindelof. Victor Lindelof is a good defender. Victor Lindelof will remain a good defender at Manchester United, but Rafael Varane is a creme de la creme defender. He is your top shelf magazine defender. Explicitly good. That's how good Varane is going to be for Manchester United. And to pair him alongside Harry Maguire, who proved himself as a world-class centre-back at Euro 2020. Simple as that. I don't want to hear anybody saying anything else apart from the fact that he is a world-class centre-back now. All right? You might disagree, but I think you're wrong. He's fantastic. And to have a partner like Maguire, man, I could just swoon about, I could swoon about Varane all day. Uh, I'm not sure if you've seen, uh, it's coming out from Webby. Uh, it looks like Manchester United are playing a behind-closed-doors friendly today at Old Trafford against Burnley. That might well be the first time that Rafael Varane links up alongside Harry Maguire in a Manchester United shirt, and we all want to see that this weekend against Southampton. Again, no offence to Lindelof, but, you know, Manchester United had to be ruthless, man. And the fact that we've signed Varane is ruthless because we could have gone into this season with Lindelof as a centre back, it would have been an it would have been a decent enough partnership, but decent doesn't win you titles. Decent doesn't win you the Champions League. The best wins you titles. The best wins you the Champions League. Last season, City wouldn't have won the title if they didn't go out and sign Ruben Diaz. Simple as that. Liverpool wouldn't be where they are now if they didn't go out and sign Van Dijk. Big money, best player. I mean, it's not really big money for Varane, but that's because we've well we've we've lucked out really because Real Madrid balls up their contract. But let me see in the comments what you think about Varane, because I can see there's plenty coming in. Mark, you're saying Maguire has a lot to prove this season. You let me know what you think about that in the comments below. I understand kind of what I understand what you mean. 
because there was a lot last year that was left to be desired around certain parts of Maguire's game. But at the same time, I think Maguire really was far better than people gave him credit for. And I think the weaknesses that were exposed in his game will not be exposed this year because the partnership is there. There's a reason that John Stones has stepped up and that's Ruben Diaz. Simple as that. Ruben, John Stones would not be the player he is right now if they hadn't signed a player like Ruben Diaz to play alongside him. He may be a, a good centre defender in his own right. But Harry Maguire proved it at Euro 2020, as far as I'm concerned, that he can play. He is world-class. And I, I, the, the, the concept of work being world-class, I mean, the definition of world-class used to be, I don't know, your Zinedine Zidane's, your Ronaldinho's, your Ronaldo's, old-school Ronaldo's. That's kind of way, that's kind of where the definition was. And it has been a little bit lost. And it just kind of gets banded around a little bit too much. Like, oh, he's world-class. He's world-class coming through. But I think Harry Maguire has proved that he is world-class. Sure, he's got deficiencies in his game. Sure, he doesn't have huge pace. Sure. But that's when you partner him with the right... It's about it's about complementing. It's like cooking. You can get two brilliant ingredients, but if they have completely different ends on the, on the taste spectrum, they won't go well together. Maguire and Varane really look like they're just going to link up perfectly. And I can't wait to see that. Matthew, what are you saying here? The only thing that Maguire lacks is pace. And with Varane now, I think we have a great partnership. I think it would as well. Casey, you disagree saying Maguire isn't world-class, good defender and great partnership though. Hey, look, right. I think anybody who doesn't feel Maguire is world-class, I think by the end of the season, we're all going to say, yeah, yeah, he is. That's what I hope. That's what I hope we'll see. And I think Maguire, I think Varane will bring that out of him. What are you saying in the comments there, Craig Peterson? Craig, you won... The Ever hoodie, didn't you, my friend? That is being sent out. So I hope you get that soon. Obviously, giveaways. You know I'm like on giveaways. Oh, shit. I forgot about that. I've actually done another giveaway. <laughs> right. Let me quickly pull this one up. Uh, speaking of old school football, as I said, they're, just, they're getting involved with us because why not? Uh, they are giving away a hoodie to one of you lucky lady or gentleman. Uh, all you've got to do to enter is dead simple. Let me put it up here. This is the hoodie that's getting given away. Just go and follow them on Twitter. It's OSF. I keep forgetting. Every time I come on this bloody stream, it's OSF shop. There it is. All you got to do is go over to them on Twitter right here and follow them. Simple as that. The winner's going to be chosen by the end of this week. And I said to you always, and I maintained it, I'm going to keep doing giveaways on this channel. Every time every time we get, reach 1,000 subscribers, and another giveaway is happening. This time, we're giving away a hoodie. Hell, next time, maybe we'll give away a nice shirt like this or something better. I don't know. But you make sure that you stick around on United People's TV and get involved in it. Because why not? It's my way of giving back to you because you give back to me. As I said, there's a few members who have joined this video already. If you fancy joining, hit that join button down below on YouTube. It's cheaper than the price of a pint. All the money is getting reinvested back into the channel. So videos like the video today on me on Sunis and Pogba and that situation, I brought an editor on to help me with those. So we're taking it forward. We're taking it upwards. If you're on Facebook, there's a little link in the description of this video. Click that. You can support too. So many of you on there as well. But look, let's quickly go back to Varane. And day he's in his Man United shirt. Look at that, number 19. Does that mean Diallo's leaving? I don't really know what that situation is. He is a, he is a beautiful boy, isn't he? Jeez. Proper elite level. I can't wait to see what he does in a Manchester United shirt. But somebody else who could be in a Manchester United shirt next season... That's Erling Haaland. Let's have a little conversation about him. And make sure you, you drop a like on, on the video and subscribe if you're new. Because I can see there's so many of you watching. And not all of you like the video. It's free. It's easy to do. Come on, get involved. It helps pump the algorithm. It might help United you know, People's TV. But Erling, I, 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 Diallo took 16. Thank you very much for letting me know that in the comments below. Um, right, Josh, we need some more mods. I'll get some more mods in here. Hopefully, please don't spam the channel too much. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Man United have dropped the full Varane interview now. Let's have a look then. See if that was there. Uh, I'll do it another time. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe we'll look at that tomorrow. Ooh, very, very nice. But Haaland. We're having a conversation about Haaland. Like Jai Shanker, he's excited. We all should be excited. Raphael Hernigstein, the man from out in Germany. He is saying that 
Manchester United will really push for Erling Haaland next season. They will try to make it happen. They'll be encouraged by the connection that exists between Haaland and Solskjaer. And my word, ladies and gents, it's hard not to be excited here because Manchester United this summer, we've gone out and signed Jadon Sancho. We've gone out and signed Rafael Varane. And if things go well with Jesse Lingard, if things go well with Andreas Pereira, which things are moving in the right direction, they're in a better position now than they were 48 hours ago. And that's progress. With only two weeks left, we need progress. Could it be Haaland next summer? Type yes or no and leave it in the comments right now. Do you think Manchester United will sign Erling Haaland next summer? Yes or no? Because there's so many reasons why, you know, well, there's two reasons really that United have got the advantage with Erling Haaland. One is Oligana Solskjaer and two is Jaden Sancho. Obviously, Oligana Solskjaer was a manager when he got brought to Molde. He was a manager who helped him in his early development before he moved to Salzburg, before he moved to Dortmund and became the player he is now. And he's Norwegian. They can have a little conversation in Norwegian. And then you've got Jaden Sancho. He spent a couple of years with him out in Dortmund and they grew up together. Boys to men, they both have, they both did it together. So that link as well. So you've got the managerial and the player perspective. And I'll tell you what, the majority of you in these comments, baby, 100%. Yes, 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 yes. Although take off, you disagree. Jay Shanker, you're saying yes. Sheku, you're saying, mate, tell you what, so many of you coming into the comments here. Look, Harlan comes to the club, the best club on the planet. Hell yes, Sandy. We are the best club. Make sure you drop a like on the video, Sandy, for that. I'll drop a like on that comment. But Harlan, and I think that I think an important thing about Harlan is this as well. We got Cavani on a one-year extension. It was the perfect stopgap for Manchester. If Edinson Cavani hadn't had like really, you know, he wanted to go back to Uruguay. He wanted to leave Manchester United. It's not that he wanted to leave United, but he wanted to get closer to his family. He wanted to go back home. And we wouldn't we wouldn't have begrudged him doing that. But Manchester United, only going to Solskjaer, persuaded Cavani to stay. That's why he was given a five-week summer holiday. That's why he's missed the game that we played there against Leeds. And he probably won't be ready for Southampton. But we won 5-1. It's cool, Cavani. You just you jam. But he's back in Manchester now anyway. That was a smart move by the club. To give that extra time to Cavani is probably a big reason why he signed that new contract. And he's going to come back, re-energize and revitalize for one more year. And therefore, it's going to be the perfect stopgap towards Haaland coming in. Obviously, there is something that Jose Taylor point, rightly points out there. Raiola. Of course, Raiola is going to be an issue. Uh, but his, and it's all it's all going to be down to the signing on fees. And it's all going to be down to the wages that is offered because Haaland is going to be available for 75 million euros. That's rising to 90, depending on what Haaland does this summer, this year, this season. Sorry. So I don't know if he bangs loads of goals in, maybe his value goes up. I don't know what the ins and outs of that contract are, but Man United are going to go in hard and strong and we'll be one of the favorites to sign him. Real Madrid next summer, rule them out. They're going after Mbappe. Barcelona, rule them out because they can't afford to tie their own shoelaces at the moment. It's going to be between City, United and Chelsea. Chelsea have just signed a £100 million striker. They're not going to sign another one next year, especially after signing Werner the year before. And City, they're probably going all over, all in for Kane, sorry. Which effectively gives you... I mean, we're not going to get a free run at Haaland, but we might get a free run at Haaland. I think Bayern might be one that we can fear. And of course, Dortmund and Bayern, they love you know trading players, don't they? But with Chelsea getting Lukaku, with City probably getting Kane this summer, especially after losing 1-0 to Spurs, with Real Madrid going after Mbappe next summer, and Barcelona not being able to afford anyone, it, it leaves Bayern, Juventus maybe, depends what goes on with Ronaldo, and it leaves United. We've got a strong chance there, and we have to take advantage of it, because you drop Haaland in that team next year, we're winning the league. Simple. That is how big a signing Erling Haaland is going to be. Whatever club signs Haaland, expect fireworks for the two, three years after it. Whether that's United, whether that's Bayern, whether that's Real whoever he joins, wow, that's how incredible a play he's going to be. I think if, if he can stay injury-free, touch wood for him, stays injury-free, his career might be one of the greatest careers that you ever, you're ever likely to see. Physically phenomenal. Mentality monster. What else rhymes? Nothing. Anyway.
alliteration, sorry, not rhyming. But Harnan, whoo, my word. Let me go down to the comments here, see what you're saying. Harnan swap with Martial would be great, says Iriano. Toretto, Dominic, Dominic Toretto. We got that now. We know it's Dominic. Look, uh, I don't, uh, next summer I could certainly see Martial leaving. But again, because we're losing Cavani, will Man United lose both of those in the same summer? They might, they might not, they might not be. It, it, it's a tough situation there. Mohammed, you left a comment there, my friend, but you didn't leave anything, so I can't read anything out for you. Lingard to West Ham, here we go. I hope so, but at this particular moment, no. Not at this particular moment in time, but there's no reason why it can't. Ladies and gents, if anybody's new here, make sure you drop a like on the video. Please subscribe if you're new, and if you want to join as a member, hit the join button down below. Join so many squad members. I'll give you priority comments getting read out. Exclusive videos are coming throughout the season. When the merch drops, there's going to be discounts on the merch. There's loads of reasons to join. And it also, it helps support the channel and take us forward. And you guys are a central part of it. You really, really are. Proper geezer, you joined a few days ago. And we linked up on Twitter too. How are you doing? Barcelona won't have the money. Real, Real, Real Madrid won and Mbappe. City will get Kane and Chelsea has Lukaku. So we've only got Bayern as competition for Haaland. And of course, it depends whether or not Borussia Dortmund finally want to not sell to Bayern. And that's something they definitely won't do if they could avoid it. So therefore, Dortmund will want to sell to United rather than Bayern. And the fact that we finally got this Jaden Sancho deal over the line. Um, Sam, how could anybody be getting a mill a week? That could definitely be a problem. Of course, that's going to be an issue with Haaland. It's going to be the wages. Because he's only going to be 75, 90 million, he's going to be way underpriced for the quality of the player he is. Absolutely ridiculously underpriced, considering Chelsea just paid up 100 mil for Lukaku and then Haaland is probably twice the player Lukaku is. And Lukaku is a great player. I think it will be a very good signing. I think people shouldn't be writing Lukaku off. He's a far better, better and fitter version of Lukaku than the one that left United. Anyway, Haaland, it might be a problem his wages. It probably will be a problem his wages. But that's modern football. And that's why players love being represented, ladies and gentlemen, by Mina Raiola. That's why they bring him in as their agent, because like him or lump him, he gets players what they want. And look, yeah, Dortmund won't, won't want to make Bayern stronger. Dortmund have made Bayern stronger. Dortmund have fed Bayern's dominance. They don't want to do that forever. And if they can, if they can finally get to a situation where they don't have to sell to Dortmund and they can sell somewhere else, Dortmund, no, sorry, not have to sell to Bayern. Dortmund will take that. Dortmund will take that. Simple as that. Abby, how are you doing in the comments? Harlan next summer, Cavani and Martial to leave. PSG would be interested as well. We have Greenwood and Ahmad or Pelistri as right-wing backups. You're getting your 2022-2023 plans already down there, my friend. Look, I think Cavani will definitely leave next summer. I think Martial, there's a strong possibility Martial leaves. And that does depend on what Martial does this season. So his Manchester United career hinges on this season. If Martial comes back now and scores 20-plus goals, Martial's going nowhere. Simple as that. He'll stay. If Martial has another season like last season and it's terrible, Martial's going to get sold. And therefore, it depends whether or not Manchester United can get that central midfield signing this summer. Because if we get that central midfield signing this summer, it means next summer we can... New striker is the main priority. If Martial leaves, you're getting the Martial replacement there. If Pogba leaves, you're probably looking at Pogba replacement. So you're looking at two to three signings, probably in central midfield and attack. Your defense is kind of sorted. You don't really have to go down there anyway. Let me see what you're saying down here. It's Stephen, how you doing actually, Stephen? Haven't seen you in a while in the comments. Stan Show responded to Harlan's farewell post as well. A connection like no other. We will soon meet again, my brother. Take care and good luck to you. Ah, man. I can't make the the, the, the the thought of it just makes me horny. Simple as that. <laughs> Sancho and Haaland together at Manchester United next year. We're winning all the pots. And I don't say that with any sort of sarcasm. We're winning all the pots. If Haaland comes next year, woo, Albamiang and Coutinho swap. I have no idea what that's got to do with Manchester United. Uh, Ed Smith, how you doing? How do they point New South Wales, Australia? Big up to everybody watching out from Australia. Big fan of Australia. Oh, there's all. I was about to say, where's all? And he's just joined in. Just logged in. Who did we sign? Quick, A little quick 30-second recap for the OG. That is, of course, all. 
Surav, quickly though, if City lands Kane, where are the what are the possibilities of Haaland landing at United? Also, what is the minimum for this season to attract quality players? An excellent question there, Surav. I think um, with Manchester United this summer, this season, sorry, the League Cup is not good enough. The FA Cup is not good enough. It's the Champions League and the Premier League that we need to go up a level in to attract players next year. If you saw my season predictions, which of course all of you did, if you didn't, go and watch it now. My season predictions, I think Man United will do... I, I backed us to go for the domestic double. I backed us to finish second and I backed us to get to the quarters in the Champions League. I'd love to be proven wrong in the Champions League, but I think we might come unstuck towards that stage. But we've got Varane in now, so we're certainly getting out of the groups. Easy, done. That's how much of a difference he's going to make in the Champions League. And there's no chance that we're going after Haaland this summer because because Dortmund do not want to sell him this summer. Therefore, they're going to be putting the same sort of price on him that they're going to put on Jadon Sancho. They only did that last summer to price people out of going after Jadon Sancho because they didn't want to sell him. They sold him this summer because they had to sell him. Simple as that. Haaland will leave next summer, not this year from Dortmund, even if Man City get Harry Kane. And I'll be honest, I think they will be getting Harry Kane. But I think we certainly need a good run in the Champions League and a really strong title push. Come the start of April, I want Manchester United to be within four or five points of top spot. That would be, for me, I would consider that a strong Premier League season. I don't know whether we're going to have enough to win the league, but City lost in the first game of the season. So who knows? Maybe as all says, we're going to do the treble. But heading back to the actual main story of today, it's all about Jesse Lingard. And Jesse Lingard is the important thing here. Because Jesse Lingard is central to Manchester United making that third signing. Uh, Paul Hurst from the Times yesterday, as we covered on the peoplesperson.com here. West Ham are coming back in for him. They want to make another attempt to sign Lingard. Stuart Pearce, who's West Ham's assistant under Moyes, said the board is in Man United's court. He is contracted to them. We would like him with us. There is no doubt about that. He's a special lad and was very good around the players last year. Look, West Ham want to sign him. Lingard will want that move to West Ham. It's all about the fee, 25 million. I think we all we had, we had a nice big debate about it earlier in the comments. We all agree that 20 million plus for Lingard is a fair price. And I think I completely agree with you. England, Jay, 2022. 2022? 22. Apparently, Phil Jones didn't want to give up his number for Varane. We should have taken, ripped that number off Phil Jones's back and slapped it on Rafael Varane's back. Harsh as it is, simple as that. If you can take a number 19 away from Diallo, you can take a number four away from Phil Jones. No? Simple as that. Are uh, you watching from Pune, India? Do you think we can still challenge from without a CDM, says Ninad? Thank you very much for your comment, Ninad. Nice to see you this morning. Make sure you drop a like on the video. I'll be honest, I don't think I think we can challenge, but we will fall short without a central defensive midfielder. If we sign that defensive midfielder, Manchester United genuinely have a chance of winning the Premier League this year. That isn't an opportunity I want United to miss because if you're looking at the three signings, this central midfielder is the easiest one. We've just gone and signed Varane from Real Madrid. We've just gone and signed Sancho. From Dortmund, two mega signings, two marquee signings. Signing someone like Neves or Camavinga now pales by comparison. No offence to Neves or Camavinga, but not in the scale of the transfer. Therefore, get it done, man. Because we need that. We need that reinforcement in midfield. We can't... Matomane played brilliant against Leeds. He's not going to be doing that every game, especially when we're playing one midfielder. And I'm saying, hey, Jam, just join. Hey, Jam. Jam. Hey, Sam, just join. Is Lingard really going to leave? Who are we going to sign as a DM? Do a quick recap. I've just done the recap, so I can't do another one, my friend. But Lingard, West Ham are back in for Lingard. And that is the most important point. Really is the most important point. Because we West Ham was always the club that he was most likely to sign for. And to have him, to have them coming back in for him at this point, with two weeks to go, it's exactly what we wanted to happen. Mohamed. You didn't leave a comment, my friend. And Mike, I, I, I'm, I'm highlighting this comment. Mike, oh, Mike Oxlong, I don't know who you are, apart from Mike Oxlong. You left this comment before the show and it cracked me up. And he's just sent in a super chat. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to pull it. Would you, shag, would you shag Jones for United to win the treble? Look. Yeah, I would. Do it for the team. Do it for United. So much we love United. Love this shirt as well. As you know, oldschoolfootball.co.uk. As I keep repeating, they're not sponsoring me, but I just I like their stuff. Fits nicely, looks smart, and I like looking smart. And I don't want to buy the new kit because fuck the Glazers. So this is my way of wearing United without getting the, giving them any sort of funding. Da, da, da. Look at that, probably geezer. It's an off. It's it's a tough one. I really don't want to think about it. 
But <laughs> as I said, that comment cracked me up. So I'm glad you're laughing about it. Look, uh, if there's anyone who has a question for me, last 10, 15 minutes of the show, I'll answer as many of your questions as possible. That's what I try to do. Make it as interactive as possible. If you've got any questions you really want to ask me, please fire in super chats as well. If you are new, please drop a like on the video. Please subscribe. I try and make this as interactive as possible. And I think you all really enjoy it. We're building a nice community here. Or say, no, the Glazers will sell the mid that sells, will sign the mid that sells the most shirts. Uh, I don't think any midfielder that we sign or is going to be a massive shirt seller. We're not going to go out and sign Ndidi. And I'll be honest, even if we did, who's going to go out and sign a, a, buy an Ndidi shirt when we've signed Sancho and Varane? That central midfielder is not going to be the glamour signing. It's going to be the necessary signing. It's the final missing piece of that puzzle. And there's no point repeating ourselves because we all know that. And in terms of like App is asking any new developments around the central defensive midfielder. Yes, there is new developments, my friend. And it's the fact that West Ham are back in for Lingard. Any developments that we have with actually signing a central midfielder revolve around us selling. Therefore, that's why it's a really important, important signing. Or well, not signing, but important stage with Lingard. Sandy, you're saying who's my ideal central defensive midfielder? I've said it all along. Ruben Neves. I've, uh, Ruben Neves has always struck me as a player that is very good in his role in, in a double pivot alongside Martinia, but somebody who I feel could really be coached into a proper holding midfielder. It wouldn't be like a, an out and out like Ndidi and like making like four or five tackles a game, but I like his all round game. And I think Ruben Neves could be crafted into it, molded into a role that would suit our midfield perfectly. Um, let's have a look down here. Ahmad, you're saying, when will we play Donny van der Beek? People forget he's an experienced champion. Yeah, he was experienced. He got to the semi-final before that game against Spurs. Donny van der Beek will get his chances this season, ladies and gentlemen. Don't you worry about that. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what he does, how he does it. Van der Beek has bulked up this year. Clearly, he felt his physique was something that didn't really help him in central midfield. It's very, it's a very tough position, uh, central midfield. You know, a lot of a lot of movement, a lot of shoulders, a lot of body barging. That's why Paul Pob is so unstoppable when he's on form there. I think Van der Beek will get plenty of game time when he forces his way into that team. Maybe he'll force someone out of it. But with Pobba and Bruno totaling seven goal contributions between them in one game. That's why Donny van der Beek is not playing. Mohamed, you finally left a comment, my friend, saying, good evening from Selangor, Malaysia. I think we'll have the advantage with Oli and Sancho, but the big challenge is Raiola. Obviously, talking about Haaland, I would love to see Haaland sign next year. And that's obviously going to be where our focus goes. Um, Ali, you're saying, don't make the Glazers take your money, Sam. I'm with you. There are many replicas and copies from East Asia. The same quality as the original. Look, here we go. We've got Retro. We've got Bakary watching from Italy. Good morning to you, my friend. Um, like Proper Geezer says, like, share, subscribe, and super chat, and join. Like Proper Geezer, part of the family, because he's a proper geezer. Do whatever you want. Dropping a like is free. Sharing the video is free. Leaving your own comment is free. Do whatever you can to help get involved and be part of the community. If you really want to become a real part of the community, then join. No one's obliged to do it. If you'd like to, everything that comes into it is going to be put back into the channel to make it bigger and better. I keep saying it, but the podcast, I'm working on that at the moment. I'm also working on the merchandise. Lots and lots of stuff. Stacy, you've written such a big comment there that I'm going to have to read it out. You can't even see my face now. I look like a guy who's poking over the wall. If West Ham come in and take Lingard and Phil Jones, who's been thieving a living, he has to go. Matters still has a lot to give. Even if he comes off the bench, Pereira's been decent. He will probably shine at a club that centres around morale building. At United, it's either put your big boy boots on or remain in the reserve squad. Just have a look at Fred, for example. Given game time, he made an impression. If Pereira stays, oh my God, that's a long comment. Woo! But anyway, I'm going to stay here now. I'm going to hide behind the comment. I'm not going to hide behind the comment. Look, plenty of, plenty of good things you say there, my friend. And I think Pereira, he'll go and he'll do well somewhere else. Jesse Lingard will do well somewhere else. Juan Mata will stay here for one more season and then he'll leave. I was kind of surprised that he wasn't let go this year. But United, I think we're just being a little bit friendly to him. Anna's saying, any new giveaway? Yeah, there's a new giveaway. I left it in the comments earlier. Uh, old School Football Dakota UK, they're giving away a red hoodie. All you need to do is follow OSF Shop on Twitter and send them a tweet saying United People's TV sent you as well. Key. Actually, it's not key, but just do it. Makes me look good. <laughs> Makes us look good. But um, yeah, that's my next giveaway. And don't worry because we're only a few hundred subscribers away from getting the next giveaway. Let's see what number we're on now. See if we can't reach a new number by the end of the stream. But as I, as I maintained, 
every 1,000 subscribers on United People's TV, I'm doing a giveaway. 200,000 was a big one. 200,000, we gave, I gave away a Patrice Evra presentation box with hoodie, with uh, a letter from Evra, with a bag as well. Very lovely. Um, that went away. That went to Craig Peterson out in South Africa. Congratulations to you, my friend. Now, we are on the edge. We let, Hell, let, why don't we try and do this this stream? Because then we can get another giveaway going. We're on 945. So if there's 50 of you that are watching, why don't you why don't you subscribe now? Get involved because 50 subscribers away from another giveaway. I tell you what, we are giving away things left, right, and center. Surav, you're saying just a wild thought. Why not play Lindelof in defensive mid and go for a 4-1-2-3? He is good on the ball and can cover the defense if needed. At least Ole can try. I'll, I'll completely disagree with you, Surav. Um, only for the fact that I, Manchester United should not be trying to force things in midfield. That's what we can't do. We didn't force things with Varane and Sancho. We went and signed the best. You've got to show that ambition in midfield. It's not about forcing players into roles and seeing whether Lindelof or Tuanzebe or anybody could play there. You need to do it properly. And therefore, that means going out and signing real quality. Sandy Roy, lovely to have you here today. Lovely to have you on board as a new member of the gang. Uh, let me see who's going down there, who's down here. Manoil, an OG. How are you doing? If we win nothing, should Ole stay? I'm going to say yes. I, I The way I see Manchester United operating as a football club, it's all headed in the same direction under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer that I just haven't seen under any other manager since Fergie. And we're in a better position as a football club because of the work that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is doing. It's as simple as that. Whether or not we win, the pressure is on Solskjaer to win this year. And the pressure should be there because we signed Sancho and we signed Baran. So trophies should be coming to Manchester United this year. I think it's going to be the domestic cups. Let's see what happens. But I wouldn't sack Solskjaer if we didn't sign anything. My own opinion, you might disagree. Hey, Sam, Sandy from Kolkata just joined Feeling Awesome. Yes, big up to you from Kolkata, my friend. Um, someone there asking why Super Chats are not supported in Pakistan. I'm not sure why they're not supported in Pakistan. I'm not sure why there's struggle, some struggle to join as a member from Australia as well. There's nothing I've done on the channel. If there's anything going wrong, it's not my fault. But make sure you all drop a like on the video right now if you're watching. Get involved. Um, Ole must let his player management skills and make McTominay and Ghana world-class central defensive midfielders, says Craig Peterson. I don't think that really is on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Obviously, he's gonna, Solskjaer is there to make those players feel bigger and better than they are. But that would be down to Michael Carrick and Darren Fletcher to make them into world-class central midfielders. Look at that. Never mind. Michael Carrick, he's just joined as a member. Michael Carrick, mate, you've got to get back to the ground. You've got to be making the into a world. Anyway, big up to you, my friend, for joining. Let me know where you're watching this from. Uh, I'll try and give you a shout out as we go through the league. Through the league? Through the video. Uh, Chris, you're saying, I'm going to say yes, let's back him. Let's not forget Ole is learning too. The best manager since Ferguson. Uh Solskjaer is the only one who's really been given the opportunity to learn on the job. And he has learned on the job and he's got better on the job. Something that's very natural to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is man, is man management. You can see that straight away. Something that isn't as natural is tactical development. But he's doing that and he's improving that. I remember straight away, was it against... I remember this. When we played, when uh, it was the uh, Solskjaer first three months... And he was hypey. We were winning everything. And then we went away to Spurs. And that was when Pochettino was getting linked to United. And he switched and he played split strikers. Surprised everyone. Pop was long ball over the top. Rashford's clinical finish. We won 1-0. It was considered a tactical masterclass from Solskjaer. So even early on, there were signs that he could do that. And he's learning and developing that. It's a side of the game that some people want to be immediate. And some are immediate. But Solskjaer has a personality that suits United more. Look. And he does. He did speak in cliches at the start, but I'm so happy with Solskjaer as our manager. And I wouldn't and anybody else who's outside my club. I couldn't give a fuck what they think. I really could not give a crap. Man United as a football club, as a fan, looking at it, we're in the strongest position we've been in such a long time, and that's because of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Simple as that. Um, let me go down here. Da, da, da. We badly need indeed. He says, "Bra, look, you're not wrong there, my friend." We do. I'll tell you what else we badly need. We badly need 50 subscribers. Could we do it on this stream? That's probably a bit wishful thinking. 
seeing as it is only a Tuesday morning. But if 50 more of you join, we can get another giveaway organized for tomorrow. Man, I'm basically Santa, the Santa of YouTube, just giving away things constantly. Actually, no, I'm better than Santa because Santa only comes once a year. I come like two, three times a month with presents. That also sounds weird. Let me just let me just park that conversation and move on. Well, Danny, you're saying we should back Ole. That's the way we get better. We have backed Ole, man. He's been backed. And this season, he certainly has been backed. Very much been backed. And there's... Of course, we haven't signed the central midfielder, which I actually think still remains the most important single signing that Manchester United can make. But we haven't made it. Let's see what happens there. For me, if we don't sign one, I think they've given Solskjaer two-thirds of what he needs. And they've put him in a situation where they could have backed him with that last signing. I think, but I, I personally think we'll fall short. I will fall short. Um, I will fall short. Manchester United will fall short if we don't sign that central midfielder. Uh, look, or saying, Sam, stay on till you get 50 more subs. We could be here for a while, my friend, because we need 49 now. But there you go. Mrs. Claus isn't happy about Santa only coming once a year. You banked that dad joke right there, Poppy Geezer. It's like you were waiting for me to say Santa before you whipped that one out. Sandy, you're saying Ruben Neves, another quality set piece taker. Tasty, bring it on. Hey, look, we've got Luke Shaw there as set pieces. We've got... No, nah, sorry, Luke Shaw. I want Luke Shaw taking set pieces. Bruno Fernandes obviously taking the ones that could go in, but in terms of the actual deliveries, fantastic. Ruben Neves. Uh, the... Ruben Neves is not somebody I'm excited to sign. I'm not excited by the idea of Ruben Neves because he's going to be bringing goals to Manchester United. That's the opposite reason of why I want him. I want him to stop other teams scoring goals against us. And with Rafael Varane playing a higher line, with Ruben Neves coming in and solidifying that midfield, we'd just be in such a better position. We really would. Hassan, how are you doing? You're saying, how do I become a member on YouTube, my friend? If you look down just below, you could hit that subscribe button like people are going to do right now. And there's a button next to it that's join. Hit that join button and get involved. If that's not there, there's a link in the description of this video as well. Less than the price of a pint. Like Sandy's joined today. Like a few of you have joined today. Like Michael Carrick has joined today, apparently. Um, all of you can get involved. Absolutely. Crack it. Really, really enjoyable live stream today. Really, really enjoyed it. Um, find Sam a go. I don't worry about that. We've got that covered. Um, but I enjoyed that stream. That was a really good debate. Jesse Lingard, that's a really important development we've had in the last four years. West Ham are back in for them, publicly back in for, for Lingard, not keeping it behind the scenes now. That's what we want to see. Lingard leaving is the centrepiece. Without Lingard leaving, we're not signing a new central midfielder. Andres Pereira going to Flamengo, whether that's on loan or for a permanent deal, I don't really think that's as crucial. Jesse Lingard is the crucial one. Let's see what happens there. Remember, ladies and gents, later on today, I'm not sure what time I'll drop it, but keep an eye out. I'm going to drop a video about Mika Richards, about Graham Sooners, and about Paul Pogba. My opinion on it, and I'll be honest, I'm pissed off. And that's why I'm calling him out on it. Simple as that. So we're 50 subs short of the next giveaway. Let's see if by the time we come tomorrow, can we hit that? Can we hit? I'm sure we can do that in the live stream tomorrow, but hopefully we'll do that today. Anyway, ladies and gents, if you are new here, Drop a like on the video as I say goodbye. Make sure you subscribe. And thank you to Sandy. Thank you to Carrick. Thank you to everybody who joined today. A cracking live stream. I enjoyed that one. Really good comments. Really good debate. And as I said, it's the most interactive stream you're going to get on YouTube about Man United, surely, right? I don't lie. Anyway, hope you all have a cracking day. Check out the video later. And I'll be here tomorrow as well at 10.30. Until then, take it easy.